What's up, y'all? Welcome back, man. It's your boy, D-Friend. So, all right, man, we got it. I made like five videos about this. I ain't putting none of them hoes out because more shit keeps on progressing by the day. And I kind of really want to talk about this with somebody else so I can bounce ideas off each other. But I'll, I'll give this one a shot. So, Nicki Minaj dropped her Bigfoot song, right? Um, and I will say, Alpha first reaction, first listen, it's not the most, you know, sonically pleasing, you know, record to listen to. I'm not going to lie to you. It's not because of Meg. It's not whatever. As you know, if you watch this show, when Nicki Minaj brought Pink Pin 2, I said it was one of the best albums of last year. I put two of her records in my top 10. So I was like, I'm not, there's no Nicki Minaj hate here before we get into this conversation. Just got to clarify that. But regardless, Nicki Minaj has a built-in infrastructure, right? And that's her fan base. So she can give the illusion that something is bigger and better than it actually is, right? So TMZ puts out a post. They say Nicki Minaj releases Bigfoot diss track aimed at Make the Stallion. Fans reject it. Not to say... Nicki Minaj fans rejected because let's be honest, a lot of Nicki Minaj fans are like mindless drones and they'll just kind of go any direction and Nicki Minaj sways them, right? So she says, reject a song that just broke a record for highest debut in Apple Music history with none of these paid shenanigans. Told y'all about TMZ a long time ago. <clears throat> That's another company they're allegedly in bed with. Hashtag Big Hoof. Hashtag Big Hoof. So she's insinuating again to her fans and the, and the people, which is, which is great, which is a great thing to do. If you're an artist, right? If you're an artist and you want people to be on your side, always make the machine look like they're against you because everybody likes the quote unquote underdog, right? Everybody's against me, but like everybody wasn't against you when your album sold 200,000, everybody wasn't against you when your songs were trending. Like, so now everybody's against you, obviously because Meg and rock nation, they're all in bed and they, they want to come after you, right? That's, that's the thing now. That's a, that's a trick. If you ever get big enough to where you can garner a fan base, have a loyal fan base, just always make it look like the machine is against you and you'll be good, right? So uh, then she goes on to you know, tweet the, the accolades, right? So Bigfoot by Nicki Minaj, number five, breaks the record for biggest debut for a female rapper in Apple Music history, surpassing her own seeing green hashtag, uh, hashtag uh, number nine. So y'all come over here and read this shit. Now, I don't really be all this Apple music shit. I don't be believing a lot of shit. Cause I feel like every other week is like this, no, this broke the record. This one broke a record. Now this one's a here. It's like, mm, I don't know if like there's bigger songs than, than Bigfoot that came out. And obviously this is anticipated cause it's like a diss song. And obviously the barbs are going to go full on and support. Like I said, she has a caveat of having a large fan base. So I don't know if I believe this, but cool. It breaks the record for the biggest debut for a female rapper, but it's not like it's a great song. And I feel like a lot of barbs know it's not a great song. And I'm not of the elk of people who, like, people were shit on Nicki Minaj for Big Fraud, right? When she did that in response to Remy Ma. I think Big Fraud, uh, not Big Fraud, No Frauds, uh, was, like, this horrible song. Oh, my gosh, you got Wayne and Drake on it. It's corny. But if you actually listen to the bars in that song, like, I could have helped you out that pit you fell in. Did you ask me? Whatever like that. Like, a pit you fell in. You fell inside of a pit, but Remy Ma is a felon. Like, that may be a simple bar. Like, oh, that's simple. But, like, that song was actually pretty good, right? This one, not so much. A lot of it is the tweets that Sherry tweeted out right? It's a lot of the snippets that we already heard. And then the end of it is her like talking in this like very Joker-esque uh, voice. If you ever come for me again, I have more things to say about you. Like I'm not overly Im impressed with it. That's just me. Now, all Meg said was, you know, you mad at Megan? You mad, as Me you mean mad at Megan's law. Like you need to be mad about, you know, the, the law from the little girl who got killed and kidnapped. We have to have the predators be known who the predators are, where the predators live. Like we have to know that. And so it happens to be that her husband is a predator. He is not alleged. He went to jail for attempted rape on a woman who said that he was fighting with her, pulled her pants down with a knife, pulled her pants down, raped her. She ran to the school, told a told security guard. He went to jail. Like that, that's what happened. Right. Um, and that really struck a nerve with obviously Nicki Minaj because she doesn't want that to be brought up. Like she started, she was in a lawsuit because the woman who was assaulted by her husband said that they tried to pay her to say this didn't happen, which I can see why you do that because you don't want to be seen bringing a man into the public sphere. Like this is the man I love. This is my husband and he's a predator. Like you don't want that. Right? So even when you listen to some of the lyrics in Nicki Minaj is clowning, um, Meg for all her failed dating history when Nikki also has a failed dating history up to her husband who is a predator, right? Like, like we get it. You found love, but you know, you found love in a, a hopeless place, like with a predator, right? So, um, I don't know if that's a win. Like, I don't know if fans can see Pat, like that's not a win to me. Like saying that Meg and, and people are bringing up 30 year old T like she said like that, like, Oh, y'all bring up 30 year old T like, this was like saying, oh, your husband's a thief because he stole a piece of bubblegum. Oh, that's 30 OT. Y'all say my husband a robber because he robs him. No, he like assaulted a woman, right? And people keep trying to say like, what does that got to do with Nikki? 
I could say that it has to do with character, right? Like, y'all tell me, Nikki fans included. Don't be mad, just y'all tell me. If y'all found out that y'all's boyfriend 20 years ago was a sexual predator and had a case, and every time y'all moved around, you had to put y'all address because he's on the registry. This isn't fake. He's on the registry. Would y'all date him? If y'all knew y'all friends was dating a nigga on the registry, would y'all let that nigga around y'all kid? Like, y'all just tell me. Get out the Nicki Minaj about Y'all tell me what's worse, right? <clears throat> and I get it. Uh, Meg is a, a sexual harlot, right? She has sex with a lot of people, right? In her music, she says she has sex with a lot of people. We got Tori. We got the baby, We got possibly Jeezy. We got Courtney Nicki, French Montana. We got Money Bag Yo. We got, who else is she named? I don't remember who else she named in the track. The baby. that's like that, Tori. A plethora of people, right? Is she fucking Party of Fontaine? Is she fucking her producer? Do you want to be? Who not? Like, she's fucking a lot of people. But also, too, it's like, I thought y'all wanted people to be hoes. And now I may, I may be thinking too much into it, but I thought this type, like, Nicki Minaj community, LGBTQ, women empowerment, I thought y'all wanted women to be hoes. So do we want women to be hoes, or do we want to shame women for being hoes? Are we going with the red pill? Are we going fresh and fit, shaming these hoes? Or are we allowing women to be hoes? I want to know. Or it's just for the sake of rap battle. She's a hoe. But, like, ain't y'all hoes? I was just Nicki Minaj got a whole pass. Nicki Minaj's old assistant came out and said she had a whole whole pass that she was fucking Gucci and Waka. And then she said, everybody knows that she fucked Drake and Wayne. Like, who was she fucking? And that's the thing about Meg. If I'm Meg the Stallion, if I'm Meg the Stallion, she got to respond. She has to, right? She's talking about your dead mama, she's talking about all this stuff, but she's going crazy on you. You got to respond. If I'm Meg, I'm digging into crates because this is the one thing, and I was talking to uh, Miss Fearless about this in the, in the DMs. This is a battle between two women who are highly unliked in the industry. Highly unliked. Whether y'all say Omega is like by the corporate structure of the industry, but the industry people, the inside, the, like the rappers with it, they don't fuck with her, right? The pop world likes Megan, but the rap, nah, not so much, right? Nicki Minaj, according to her, she's hated by the industry, but I'm sure she also has enemies within the artist. So if Meg don't go digging in them crates and finding out any information she can about Nicki, what she's done, who she's fucked over, what she's done, what she said, in anything, just pull the crates, but find it. I feel like that's the way that she can propel her career for because let's be honest a lot of people besides Nicki Minaj fans are saying that this track really ain't it it's just not it's what she did on Instagram live it's not the craziest thing in the world it's disrespectful yeah she's talking about her dead mama and she ain't like disrespect blatantly her dead mama but anybody bringing up your dead parent would give you some type of you know visceral reaction when when you know that when somebody's talking about you it'll give you that but I mean yeah we already know she fucked the baby we knew she fucked Tori we knew she she fucked up friends like these aren't things that are necessarily new and although the bars were witty, like, you know, um, what she say, having a party, what she say, having a party, I don't know what she said, something about like the baby, having a party with the baby and rubbing on Tori toupee, like that's funny because Tori hanging no hair and they got a fake man, like man wig, like those bars are witty, those bars are funny, right? But then she goes on one bar, she said, dance on a minor, it's like, are we gonna, do we wanna go there? Do we wanna like, like, we wanna do that? Do we wanna go into the, like, I thought we were moving past the Megan's Law thing, do we, like, do we wanna do that? And to be fair, um, this isn't really fair or generous, but um, Nicki Minaj's husband isn't a pedophile because he was also 16 uh, at the time he did this to this other 16. So he's not a pedophile. He is a predator, according to the court of law, but he's not a pedophile because a pedophile would be a grown man doing it to a child. Now, her brother, her brother, according to the state of uh, according to the law, he is a pedophile. And I can see also why people would be mad at Nicki because Nicki did write a letter to the judge to say after her brother was convicted that he was the gentle, kind soul. And people are like, why would you want to defend a, you know, a pedophile? So the Megan's Law Bar could really go for your husband or your brother. So like I said, Nicki Minaj can defend her family. That's no fault. But if we're going to have a battle of character, because to me, this is what it looks like to me. This is a battle of character, right? Meg is a liar. She lied about, she lied to Gail King. She lied about her fighting Kelsey. She lied. She's a liar. That's like not even disputed, right? And she's promiscuous. But like, y'all like, people being hoes. So I don't know if that's a disc because y'all like that. Y'all promote that. Like slut walk, all this type of shit. Y'all live that. Nikki, Nikki Minaj is probably women boss up sexual liberation, fuck niggas to get money. Like that's probably her thing. So to me, it's not really a diss because also Nikki has a history of fucking niggas, right? Like the F1 nigga, Nas, Meek, Safari, and I'm sure it's a plethora of other niggas we don't know about. So like they all fucking niggas. But anyways, <clears throat> um, the song was not great and I don't remember what I was saying, but oh yeah, it's a battle of character, right? So Meg's character is a liar. She's a, she's a harlot, a whore, whatever. And then you go to Nicki Minaj's character, like you're willing to put up and start a family with a man who's convicted of um, a sexual crime. Like you're cool with that. So I would ask the audience again, you guys, um, when you look at these two people's character, 
whose character do you think is more in question? Because let's not be naive. Like Nicki Minaj also has a lot of history in the industry where people like Remy Ma says she's bitter, spiteful. She stops back. She does this. She does that. She'd be friends with these new female rappers and then they fall out for whatever. I don't know. They always just seem to fall out. Who, who knows why? Who knows how? Um, but y'all think Nicki Minaj has things in the industry as well. So I feel like they're probably more similar than not. Also, last thing on this, like I said, I'm really rambling here. I'd rather have a discussion with somebody about it. So when we do the podcast, we'll probably talk about it. But last thing, I want to know what the real deep-seated issue is behind uh, Nicki Minaj and Megan Thee Stallion. Like, why? You know that great meme? Like, what did you do to make the nigga so mad? Like, I get it, she brought up her husband. But, like, two, literally two weeks ago, Cardi, Cardi B got mad and said, tell your nigga to go to the park, which we all know, like, what that means, right? And she didn't get this crazy reaction. It's something about Meg that got this crazy reaction. I get it. People saying, oh, it's because when Nicki Minaj was trying to have a baby, Meg was trying to make her drink. Like, nah, that was they was both kiki and having fun, getting drunk, doing all that shit. I don't believe that. I don't believe that's what it is. I feel like that's a front. That's a front to, you know, to, to give y'all. I think it's obviously, I mean, it's obvious what I think. It's the Cardi B shit. She did a record with me, and then our record came out. And then a year later, she do WAP with Cardi B. It goes number one. It's a big, massive record. Um, it kind of re- sparks like Cardi's career in a way like she had 2018 she had a bunch of them songs going crazy can she do it again she gets WAP pick number one number one for four weeks that's going crazy it's being talked about by everyone everybody's like where's Nikki?" and <clears throat> I think that's the catalyst now you can call her fake whatever phony because she was on live with Nikki. like who writes who write they raps and obviously it could be as seen as a dig at Cardi B but I mean at that point it is what it is she probably started dating Partisan Fontaine and I oh know that would have been before because that would have been before no that would have been after she got shot yeah so yeah, been around that time. She probably fucking with Partisan Fontaine. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, that's what I think it is. So I got a bunch of more shit, a bunch of the shit that was going on behind this, but I really don't want to dive too much into it. Even like the whole Juju on the beat thing. Like, <clears throat> did she actually think that he was going to clear that? To me, that felt like another manipulation of the audience. More One of those like, I'm going to do this beat, right? I know Juju on the beat is a part of it. I know it's not going to get cleared, but just to give more of the industry is against me. Everybody hates me. Look at this. They're trying to sabotage me thing. They'll feed into it. And the fans did feed into it. But like logically thinking like who would think that a producer who you came up with, who you is, is tied to every single one of your hits in your career would clear a beat that's dissing the artist that you came up with. Like who would even think that? Like, why would you even think that? And then she says a six year old beat. How did out of all the beats she just dropped out? She got a million beats. The six-year-old beat from Juju on a beat just so happens to be the beat that she conjures up to use. Like, let's be, let's be, can y'all be real? Can y'all like use a little bit of it? Like, I get it. Y'all love Nicki. I like Nicki. I'm going to Nicki's concert. I like Nicki Minaj. But can we at least use our brains here when we fucking discussing these things going on in the world? I just want people to be logical. That's all. But anyways, I've been rambling. I've been talking. Let me know what y'all did in the comment section down below. Have a conversation. And if it's a comment that I resonate with, I'll chime in. If it's hate, if it's like, whatever, I'll chime in. Get to it. I had to convince myself that I'm going to make it. You know, regardless of how people felt at that time. And what it does is it makes you feel like, well, it made me feel like there's going to be points that people are going to mistake my confidence for arrogance. They don't understand the process I went through mm -hmm. and how much I had to believe in myself in order to make these things.